Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss partial derivatives. So we're going to be using a book to help us do that. This book is wonderful. It is called Calculus of Several Variables and it was written by the famous Serge Lang. So we're going to start right here and we're just going to take a snippet of mathematics from this book and discuss it. It says, let us start with two variables. Given a function, f of x, y, of two variables, x and y, let us keep y constant and differentiate with respect to x. We are then led to consider the limit of this expression here. This is a difference quotient. As h approaches 0, if this limit exists, we call it the derivative of f with respect to the first variable, or also the first partial derivative of f, and denote it by, so in this case, it's with respect to x, um, but it's saying first variable to indicate that, you know, this will generalize to n variables. And here you see it has a subscript of one because it's the first variable. So, uh, and then notice the parentheses around the x, y. That's uh, to emphasize that this is a new function, right? Uh, assuming the limit exists, right, where it's defined. So let's keep reading here. Let's get to some more information. It says here, the notation allows us to use any letters to denote the variables. For instance, you can use u and v here, you see. Note that the d1f is a single function, or d sub 1f. We often omit the parentheses, writing, writing it like this, okay, for simplicity. It's just an interesting way to think about it, right? It's important. Also, if the variables x, y are agreed upon, then we write it like this. Similarly, we can define uh, this expression here. So, and then here's here's uh, where the subscript is to. Notice that now you're adding a number uh, to the k, you're, uh, to the y rather, you're adding k here. Uh, before, um, actually, that's a typo. That should be that should be an h. Okay, that should be an h, or it should be as k approaches zero because um, that term has to approach zero. See so over here h was approaching zero, right? So here, it should be an h here. And if you want to use k, you can, but then the k should approach zero. And then here they have an example of, uh, of a partial derivative. Let's, let's go ahead and work through this example, and then we'll see what, um, yeah, we'll see how we're doing. So let's see. So we have a function f of x, y, it's equal to x squared, y cube. And so we want um, the partial derivative of this function. Okay, so that's del f del x with respect to x. Uh, that means we treat all the other variables as constants. So in this particular case, we're going to treat um, the y variable as a constant. Uh, so it just hangs out. So we're just going to differentiate the x squared. We'll use the power rule, right? You bring down the 2, subtract 1 from the exponent. So you just get 2x, and then this constant hangs out. Boom, there it is. Del f del x, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, or with respect to the first variable, if you prefer to say it that way, as uh, Serge Lang uh, does. And now we can find del f del y, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, or with respect to the second variable. Same thing here, except this time we treat uh, x squared as a constant, so it hangs out. So taking the derivative of y cubed with respect to y, you bring down the 3, subtract 1 from the exponent. So it'll be 3x squared, y squared. Notice how I put the 3 up here. Really, when you do it in your head, if you just, it, it looks like this. But you don't want to leave it like that. That's weird, right? So you just put the 3 in the front. And then, and then here we are. So those are the partial derivatives. Let's take a look now and see uh, what Lang says about this, right? Let's just take a look at the book and see what, what comments uh, are made uh, in this example. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. Uh, so we have this function here, right? And that's pretty much what we got. We observe that the partial derivatives are themselves functions. Yes, this is the reason why the notation d sub i of f is sometimes more useful than this notation here, this del f del x sub i. It allows us to write this here for any point p in the set where the partial is defined, right? It allows you to specify the point. Uh, there cannot be any ambiguity or confusion with a meaningless symbol. 
since f of p is a number, thus d sub i f of p means this. It is the value of the function. He's really, really, really emphasizing that, right? He's really making a, a big deal about the notation. Um, and then here's another example. Uh, here you have a function f of xy equals sine of xy. And we have to find, um, this is the partial derivative with respect to the second variable uh, at uh, the ordered pair 1 comma pi. So they first find this, or this, which is simply, so they take the partial here, the derivative sign is cosine, and then you use the chain rule. So you're taking the partial with respect to y, right? So the derivative of y is 1, you're left with an x. That's how you get that x there. So you get x times cosine xy. And then you just plug in x equals 1, y equals pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so you get that. And then there's another example there. So, And then he, he goes on to to explain that you can define it, um, you know, for uh, three variables here. Oh, look, look, here he fixed the mistake. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. So so here you notice that there's an H on the Z, right? Um, it's being added to the Z before. Remember, we had the K. So H is approaching zero. So here he did it uh, correctly. It was probably just a slip up. He was probably working with circles or hyperbolas because a lot of times um, a lot of the equations for conics and stuff uh, Typically, there's a, there's a K there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so interesting uh, mathematics. Hopefully, uh, you've learned something um, from, from this video. Uh, I will, uh, I'll try to leave a link in the description to this book uh, or somehow in the video in case you want to check it out. Um, yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Oh, also, if you want to learn math, uh, I have courses. They're on Udemy. But if you get them, use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. Subscribe if you want to, and check out my other channel, The Internet Sorcerer. Keep doing math.